Hi guys, I'm back from my little hiatus and I'm really excited to share some new recipes with you and they're all gonna revolve around one of my all-time favorite foods, sweet corn. I'm going to be showing you how to char these corn cobs on the hob using a griddle pan so that we get some lovely char marks on them. And then I'm going to share three recipes that I like to make using corn that I've prepared this way. And the first one that I'm going to be making is elotes. It's also often referred to as Mexican street corn. So that will be served whole on the cob with some really yummy toppings. And then the second recipe will be a green salad with avocado, the charred corn, lots of herbs and a tangy lime and miso dressing. And then the final recipe will be a corn salsa, which is a little bit of a hybrid between corn salsa and pico de gallo, but it will all become clear later. And I'm also going to show you how I like to serve that salsa on top of some tacos. I hope you think this sounds good, because if you don't, I'm not sure we could be friends anymore because I really just love sweet corn. It really is one of my favorite foods. But jokes aside, I'm sure you will like at least one of these recipes. And as always, you can find them linked in the description box if you want to see the full recipes written out. But now I think we're ready to start preparing the corn. But while I heat up my pan back there, I just want to thank Skillshare for sponsoring this video. Skillshare is an online learning community for creative and curious people with thousands of inspiring classes on different creative topics like videography, photography, freelancing, illustration, even cooking. There's lots to choose from on there. And what's really great about Skillshare is that it's curated specifically for learning, meaning there are no ads and they're all always launching new premium classes so that you can stay focused and discover new things. I recently revisited one of my all-time favorite Skillshare classes, which is Spencer Falls class called Everyday Flowers, and I thought I must share this with you again because it really is such a visually beautiful and fun class, and I always feel relaxed and excited to create after watching it. So if you would like to try out Skillshare for yourself, the first 1000 of you to click the link in the description box will receive a one month free trial to Skillshare Premium to try out all the classes. But now let's start prepping the corn. And uh, for the elotes, the Mexican street corn, I'm just going to peel back the husk and then remove the silks. But I'm not going to pull the husks off. I'm just going to tie them together using a little piece of the husk. And you really don't have to do it like this, but it's a very beautiful way of serving the corn, I think, when you're eating it on the cob. Then for the other cobs that I'm using for the other recipes, I'm just removing the whole husk and all the silks to make the corn naked and ready for charring. When I've prepared and removed the husks, I clean them under some cold water and then pat them dry. Next, I take a little bit of rapeseed oil in one hand and then rub that all over the kernels before placing the cobs onto the hot griddle pan. It's important that you preheat the pan because we are looking to get some nice char marks onto the kernels and this is best done if the pan is hot when you put them in. So my griddle pan is actually quite small, so I'm using this pan to just press everything down so that it, um, the corn touches the surface of the pan, because if it doesn't, you're not going to get the charring. But I would say that a square griddle pan would be better for doing this sort of roasted corn on the hob. And depending on the size of your corn, as well as how well your pan is distributing the heat, it will take a different amount of time to char the corn. But I'd say it takes about 10 minutes if your pan is heated up and nice and hot and ready to go when you pop the corn on there. But if it's not super hot, then it might take up to 15 minutes. And while I'm doing the corn, I'm also going to pop on two little jalapeno peppers onto the griddle as well to get some color on them and to soften them up and I'm going to use these in my two last recipes so you'll see them a little bit later and you'll want to keep an eye on these because they obviously cook faster than the corn and make sure to turn them a lot so that they don't burn on one side and are not cooked on the other. Then you'll want to turn the cobs over every other minute or so. Sometimes you'll hear like a popping sound, which is a good indicator that you need to check on the corn and turn it. But you'll see the char marks anyway, so that's the best indicator. So while this cooks away over here and I'm making sure to turn it when it needs turning, I'm going to prepare the toppings for the lotus in the meantime. First up, I'm going to make a mixture of a quarter cup of vegan mayo and a quarter cup of vegan sour cream, which I'm using in the place of Mexican crema. 
I'm also grating in one small garlic clove on a microplane before I mix it all together and set it aside. This will be enough for at least four cobs. I'm also grabbing a good handful of fresh coriander and chopping it pretty fine. I'll also cut a lime into wedges that can be easily squeezed onto the corn later. Then for some heat I'll be using some ancho chili powder but you could also use chipotle chili powder if you can find it. And the last topping is cheese and there is no vegan option for cotija cheese which is the cheese that I saw that they use in traditional Mexican recipes for this. So I'm going to use either a store-bought vegan parmesan which I buy just grated like this which is really handy for this or I like to use a nut parmesan that I make at home. It's really easy. You just blend some Brazil nuts nutritional yeast, a little bit of garlic powder and salt in a blender until you have sort of this texture. And I'll make sure to pop the recipe for this in the description box if you want to use this. Once the corn is charred, simply spread some of the mayo mixture onto it and then sprinkle the remaining toppings over that. The mayo mixture will help the other toppings stick and if you wanted to you could actually roll the mayo covered corn in the toppings to make sure it really adheres well. Then finish with a squeeze of lime and you've got a perfect side dish for your next Mexican inspired feast. Okay, so let's give this a taste. Mm. I love corn. I could just eat it on its own without anything on it, just boiled. But this is such a treat. It's so good with all these toppings, it's creamy, it's a bit of saltiness, freshness from the lime and the coriander. Thank you Mexican people for this <laughs> wonderful food. Mm, I really recommend it. Make it, enjoy it. If you love corn you will love this. But now I'm not gonna eat all of this like I want to because we're gonna make the salad which has the charred corn, gem lettuce and avocado. But I wanted to say before we start making it that you can make the salad without um, avocado. If you don't like avocado or you can't get a hold of good ones, the salad is yummy without it as well. First, let's make the tangy lime and miso dressing by combining one and a half tablespoons of white miso paste with the zest and juice from one whole lime. I like to use a microplane to zest the lime, but you could do this on a box grater as well if you have that on hand. Then I add one teaspoon of maple syrup and a pinch of salt to balance out the flavors. I also add in one tablespoon of olive oil to actually carry and combine those flavors. I give it a good mix and then taste it of course. It should be quite sharp, but if you find it way too sharp, add a little splash of water and then mix again. Then I set the dressing aside while I prep the other salad ingredients. First off, I cut the end of two or three gem lettuce heads, depending on their size, and I peel the leaves one by one. I usually like to use the leaves whole for dramatic effect, but the lettuce that I found at the store this time was quite big, so I'm gonna just chop it into smaller pieces. Then I cut the corn off of two corn cobs that I've charred, trying to get the kernels as close to the core as possible, but be really careful when you do this. Next up, I slice one small red onion into thin half moon slices. I think they look really pretty like this, but of course you could chop it if you prefer. For some more interesting flavors, I also finally chop about half a cup of chives and grab a big handful of flat leaf parsley. You could either roughly chop the parsley or simply rip the leaves apart a little. I also remove the seeds from one of the jalapeno peppers we cooked earlier and chop it into small pieces. Finally, I cut two avocados open and remove the pip. I like to then cut the halves into quarters to easily remove the peel and then cut each quarter in half but you do whatever you think works to get a good bite-sized piece. With that prep, the salad is now ready to assemble and I like to start with the gem lettuce at the bottom that I like to toss with the dressing to make sure that each bite is coated with the flavor. 
Then I layer the remaining ingredients on top, making a nice pattern of different shapes. I make sure to finish with the smaller pieces of chives and jalapeno, as well as some of the parsley leaves so that I get some visual interest on top. So that's the salad done and I really love this salad. It's just got so many different flavors and textures that come together really nicely. I hope you will try it. And it's a really good side salad with pretty much any meal if you ask me. But it's also really good as a main alongside maybe like tofu or tempeh steaks or skewers. It's a really like a refreshing but satisfying meal that's really great now that we're sort of between late summer and autumn. And now let's move on to maybe making the third and final recipe, which is the corn salsa. It's not the most traditional corn salsa, I don't think. It's more like a hybrid between a corn salsa and a pico de gallo. And I will also show you how to make a nice taco combo with the salsa. But first we better make it. And I actually already prepped uh, the corn and the jalapeno pepper because uh, you already saw me cut the corn off the cob and chop and DC the jalapeno pepper. So I think uh, I can get away with this, but there are a few more things we need to do, so let's get to it. First of all, I'm going to chop a small red onion finely. You could of course use white onion or spring onion here as well if you prefer. Then I chop six of these larger cherry tomatoes and pop them into the bowl as well. Next, I grab a good handful of fresh coriander and I chop that up finely before adding it to the mix, along with the juice of half a lime. The lime juice will add some nice tang and really brighten all the flavors. Then I season with salt and I give the salsa a good mix and that's how easy it is to make. Let's make some tacos now with this salsa, but before I just want to say that this goes great in a burrito bowl or inside a burrito. I'm going to do my tacos with some store-bought corn tortillas and some of this jackfruit taco meat that I made in advance. The recipe is on my website and in a previous video, so I'll uh, link the video somewhere up here and pop the recipe in the description box, the link for it at least. So so uh, yeah, let's do it. And for a sauce, I actually like to use some of that mayo mixture we used for the elotes. So I spread that onto the tortilla and then top that with the jackfruit taco meat. Then I add a healthy scoop of the corn salsa, which gives this lots of freshness, but also that nice charred flavor and a little spice from the jalapeno. To finish off, I like adding a little bit of avocado and some extra fresh coriander. But of course, if you're not a coriander fan, just leave it out altogether. All right, so I'm gonna take a bite of this. Even though I know what it tastes like, I'm gonna try it for you anyway. So I don't know if I'm committing some sort of taco sin by putting this mayo stuff in there, but it really is a yummy combo. And um, yeah, I obviously, like you know, I've said it a million times in this video, love corn. So with this salsa, I'll eat any taco and Honestly, I could probably eat tacos all day long, so this is like a dream for me. I hope you've enjoyed this video and that you have liked the recipes that I've shared. Let me know in the comments which recipe you would go for or which dish you would go for. Thank you very much for watching. I look forward to seeing you in the next video. Take care, everyone. Bye!